I'm your host with the most local 23, joining me for Royal Romance Book 2, Chapter 14. The next day, after a long flight, you arrive in New York City. Maxwell helps you carry your bags to the hotel room. Ah, it's been so long since I've been back here. I'll say, I love New York! Maxwell, we just got off the plane. You remember Liam's first bachelor party? Serving a rowdy party of four, exploring New York, being swept off in an adventure by a, a dashing stranger? That dashing stranger being me? How could I forget? What I'm saying is, is that New York and I go way back. Now, are you ready to go to Madeline's wedding? Get Madeline's wedding ring? No. I still can't believe she'd ask me to do it. Are you... Sure. Maxwell puts out a, pulls out a cell phone and presses play on a voicemail message. Maxwell, I have an absolutely vital task for Lady Riley to complete. As I will be busy with preparations for the wedding shower, I simply have no time to go and pick up my wedding band before I return to Cor Cordonia. I must insist she be the one to do it, as thanks to me for allowing her to remain present on the tour and in Liam's life. You really didn't have an option, bitch. <laughs> oh my god, I hate her. I hate her so much. I trust you will pass along the message. I trust you will pass away. Um, she made it pretty clear. Mm. She does... Doesn't you have better things to do than rub the wedding in my face? This is Madeline we're talking about, and I think this is her idea of fun. Just... Get it over with and, well... You'd better do it today. There won't be any time after tonight's United Nations party and the wedding shower is tomorrow. Already? The end's coming up quickly, and the wedding shower and then right back to Cordonia for the homecoming ball and the, and the wedding. Wow, I not realized how close it is. Liam and Madeline getting married seems so soon. I thought we would have found Tarek by now. Hey, don't worry. Rest assured that while you're ring shopping, Bastine and I'll be hot on Tarek's trail, calling all the fanciest clothing stores in LA to track him down. We'll find him, we'll clear your name, and things will be great. I've got this, trust me. Ah, uh, you know, I do. But besides, you're uniquely qualified for the job. Really? No one's called me uniquely qualified for anything before. Unique, sure, but never qualified. I won't let you down. Wait, I just realized I don't even know where I need to go to for the ring. Oh, right, the directions. He digs into his pocket and hands you a crinkled piece of paper. You unfurl the page, revealing a drawing of him astride a saddled King Kong on top of the Empire State Building. Am I supposed to know what this means? Maxwell grabs the paper back and his cheeks flush bright red. Uh, uh, can we, uh, not talk about that? No, we're gonna talk about the fact that you're straddling King Kong. <laughs> God damn it, man. I, I don't know whether to say that was awesome or not a chance. No, we're going with not a chance. We definitely start going back to that. Preferably sometime when Drake's around. <laughs> you wouldn't. Yes, I would. I guess you'll have to wait and see. You're a crafty one, you know that? Ahem. Anyway. He reaches into his pocket, handing you another slip of paper with two addresses. The first address is the jewelry store, and the other one is the high-end boutique. Justin made an appointment there for the UN party tonight. Meet us there after you get Madeline's ring. Will do. Maxwell extends his hand towards you, palm down, and you raise a questioning eyebrow, and he grabs your hand, placing it on top of his. Team break! He throws his hands up in the air, and you follow suit. Moments later, he's out the door, and you sigh and set out to get the ring. You enter the high-end jewelry store, but before you can catch the jeweler's eye, you see... Drake? Oh, hey, Vinti. What are you doing here? 
It's a store. Anyone can go into a store. Yes, but why are you in a jewelry store? It's you. Sure, but you're the last person I'd expect to see looking at necklaces that require a down payment. After casting a quick glance around the mostly empty store, he sighs. Alright, you caught me. I'm looking for a wedding gift for Liam. In a jewelry store? What? You don't think he'd want one of those? Drake points to a gold medallion covered in so many gems that the gold is barely visible. You want to give Liam that medallion? Liam isn't a pirate! <laughs> you might not want him, but I sure do. Would Liam want you to break the bank? Liam isn't a pirate. Too much? Uh, not if you're also getting him a, a, a Galilean, and a parrot, and an eye patch. Yar, my name's Liam, and I be running Cordonian. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this is my second mate, Drake. Oh, I can barely afford this medallion. Then yeah, it's a bit much. Hmm. Back to the drawing board. So, did you come here to shoot down my gift ideas, or are you looking for something? I'm supposed to pick up Manoline's wedding ring. Wow, that's cold even for her. You notice a jeweler waving you over the counter. When you give Madeline's name, he rushes off and returns with a small box. Pick up the ring, Madeline's wedding ring. That's it? I was expecting something more. Elaborate? I was going to say pretentious, but... Hmm. I've seen, I've seen ring pops that look cooler. She's lucky to have a wedding ring. It's lucky. Or lovely. Um. I'm gonna be a smartass because it's me and Drake. I've seen ring pops. <laughs> At least you can snack on those. He studies the ring. His expression grows, growing somber. I guess their wedding's coming up pretty fast. Yeah. We'll find Tarek soon, Vinti. We have to. If we do... I'm buying everyone drinks. <laughs> you know I'll hold you to that, right? I'm counting on it. If you're done here, do you want to give me a hand with Liam's gift? He's my best friend, and I want to get him something good, but I think I'm in over my head here. Drake, are you inviting me on a shopping trip? Don't make me regret it. Hmm, what I mean is, I would be honored to accompany you. Come on, then. You follow him out the door. Why does everybody, holy crap, go to a pet store? Really, every wedding. Remember, uh, um, oh my god, the book we just ended with. Newlyweds. Pet store. Everyone goes to a goddamn pet store. Why? I don't know. Drake holds the yellow Labrador puppy in his hands out to you. It's tail waggling. Come on, Venti. Liam has always loved dogs. Do you really want to make a puppy live with Madeline? Slowly lowers the puppy back into its pen. <laughs> You're safer here, pal. Oh, we're going to Uskia. Will we be running into Becca? Wait, that's in Los Angeles. You try the furniture store. This is it, Fenty. A deluxe recliner, dual cup holders, over 50 massage settings. Really? I'm sure Liam owns plenty of chairs. You've clearly never sat at Cordunian Throne. Let's just say Liam's gonna need back support after sitting on that thing. I'm not even gonna ask how you know that. And I think we can do better than a dad's dream chair. Hey! Hey! <laughs> you know what? I sit in a very cramped chair to do these videos. I would take that chair in a heartbeat. Drake heaves himself out of a Kleiner, sighing. Unless you want him. Nah, I'm shipping that thing back to... I'm not shipping that thing back to Cordonia. What? The shipping cost would be outrageous. Oh, look! We're in the hardware store! 
Suddenly a fair old <laughs> tree beast runs in the door. Roof! You try? The hardware store? Seriously? Drake stares wistfully at the plasma cutter at the back of the shop. I swear he's like shopping for himself as like sympathy pains for his friend getting married. What would you even use that for? And what would Lee Liam use it for? Engraving metals? Come on, it's a tool. Every guy appreciates a handy power tool. I mean, it is a pla it is a it is a um, one of those really nice cutters that is high tech. Uh, even I would take one of the. Even though I don't know what I would use it for, but I would take it. Uh, like you said, you may have to engrave. It's adorable how bad you are at this. I feel like I'm watching a parody of masculinity. Holy crap, it's true. And you're not going to convince me that Liam needs a machine that creates molten plasma. Uh, I guess there's always a chance Maxwell could get near it. And that would be a bad thing. Hmm. Drake? Yeah, it'd be a bad thing. Okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> get him a coffee maker. <laughs> what, Dad? I don't know. <laughs> you lead Drake out of the store and to a bench down the block. You both slump onto it, exhausted. Trying to find a present for this wedding is like torture. I take it you're not a fan of usual wedding traditions? Drake runs his fingertips through his hair, sighing. I've got nothing against tradition. They're, they're nice, simple ceremonies, and then... There are international engagement tours. So, what would your simple wedding look like? I mean, if you ever got married, I'm invited, right? You'd be on the invite list right after Savannah. I promise to clear my calendar. I guess it'd be something small. A short reception, a ceremony, just a few friends and family. Luckily, you only have a few friends and family. Ha <laughs> ha, Fenty. Let me guess, your ring bearer would be... <laughs> oh! Oh, Bertrand. No thanks. Barty, maybe, but... His, um, dad and I still have some things to work out. I understand. What about your best man? I vote for... Liam. I bet he'd throw you the perfect bachelor party, barbecue, and stiff drinks galore. And he'd be at good at speeches. He'd never embarrass you. Hmm. Liam is a strong contender. That leaves one question. Who are you marrying in this scenario? A, sen a sentient bottle of whiskey? Olivia, me. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna go with Sandy and bottle of whiskey. Good, dude. Very good. I know you're messing with me, but if that existed, I could center it. Could you, could you imagine a Sandy and bottle of whiskey? Oh, take a sip of me, Drake. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We're all going to hell for this. I think that's the most Drake thing you've ever said. Why, thank you. Enough daydreaming for now. I still need a present for Liam. He sighs. Liam's always been there for me, and while well, you know him, he always gives the perfect gifts. It's like a superpower. I just wanted to return the favor for once, and I'm stumped. Relax, Drake. You just need to remember the secret to finding a good present. The secret is... None of these. It comes from the heart. Picking something unique to you. Thinking outside the box. Being able to read minds. Mm, unique to you. If I get him whiskey, he'd probably laugh. Hell, I'd laugh at myself. No, no. I, I, what I mean is, you know Liam better than anyone. You've been through thick and thin together. Anyone can get him something he'd enjoy, but what's something you know he'd really appreciate? I don't know what... Breaks off suddenly, his gaze falling across something metallic in the window of a nearby antique store. Wait, I've got it! 
He leaps up from the bench and ducks into the store. You barely have time to get up before he comes back grinning. This is what I'm giving Liam. Hmm. Antique compass. It's neat, but why a compass? Are you worried Liam will get lost in the wilds of Cordonia? Hmm. Something about straight and narrow. He always has guards and royal staff around, so he's never needed a compass, but they always can... They can't always be there for him. Even I can't be there for him. If he's ever out on his own, or if he ever feels like he's losing his way, I thought it might be a nice reminder. I get the feeling you're talking about more than cardinal directions. Drake shifts his weight back and forth, glancing down at the compass. Constantine was a decent king for years, but by the time he retired, he lost sight of what really mattered. Look at everything he put you and Liam through. I don't want that to happen to Liam. So I thought he could use a compass to follow, something to remind him to stay true to what he believes in. What do you think, too cheesy? Hmm. Perfect gift or thoughtful guy under the graph exterior. <sighs> I'm gonna go with perfect gift. I, I I mean I agree with him being a, a thoughtful guy under his his rough and tough exterior, but I'm gonna go with well let's try perfect gift. I can't tell if you're messing with me. I'm serious. I think it would mean a lot to him. Oh, good, because I forgot to get a receipt. Carefully tucks the compass into his pocket. Thank God that's over with. Now we just have to get to the United Nations party. It's not until tonight. Why don't we unwind for a bit? We just endured an eternity of shopping, and I think we've earned it. Hmm, could be fun to show you around the neighborhood. Going out with Drake would unlock an exclusive casual outfit for him. Oh! Well, you have quite the... the toned chest. <laughs> could your shirt be any tighter? Holy shit. Um... No, this is the smallest size I could find. Anyone who knows that movie... Uh, get ready for tonight's festivities. We already spent enough diamonds today for the uh, Endless Summer Diamond Edition. That was kind of like my Christmas present to folks. Sorry, Drake, I think I need all the energy just to make it through the night. I get that. I'll see you there, Vinti. You pull out the paper Maxwell gave you and find the address for the boutique where you're meant to meet him. You didn't hang out with Drake before the United Nations party. No shit, really. A few minutes later, you enter the boutique, which is brimming with gorgeous courtier grounds. You find Justin and Maxwell waiting for you inside. There's my golden girl. Can't have you missing tonight's festivities. You need to bring your A-game. Oh, are you going to give me an earpiece that I kind of needed for, like, the last chapter? You piece of... Ah, <sighs> he's unreliable. Justin, how am I supposed to focus when we're so close to finding Tarek? You're right. I have to make a good impression. Exactly. Tonight's events will be brimming with influential politicians and diplomats, and pressing them now could be indispensable in the future. So, who am I impressing tonight? Duchess Adelaide. She may not look it, but she wields a lot of power. Isn't getting her into good graces the same as getting into Madeline's? Not exactly. They don't always see eye to eye, and unless Madeline actually marries King Liam, Adelaide has a higher quarterly standing. She is Duchess of Crona, after all. Crona? Not Fidelia? Like Madeline? Fidelia is a county within the Duchy of Crona, which places Adelaide higher in the noble hierarchy. How do you remember all this stuff? Cordonian Court 101. Hmm, I must have slept through that one. Besides, it's my job to know everything about you and your world. It's Lady Riley's job to turn heads and minds tonight. Hmm. I need to charm them with my winning personality. I need to dress to impress. 
What exactly? Let's go with winning personality because it's gonna. That is the goal. But you know me, I'm the king of just in case. I never get tired of that one. Me either, pal. The point of this is you need to look your best as well as act your best. Hence the location for this little prep party. Don't worry, I already picked something out while we were waiting. Maxwell holds up a cream gown with intricate lace details and a delicate double-stranded necklace. You sure know how to accessorize for the occasion. I like to call it successorizing. Turn a phrase aside, this dress is festive and distinguished, perfect for tonight's event. That will most likely probably cost 20 to 30 diamonds. Go, my little... <laughs> Just... Uh, I know it's coming. I'll go try it on then. It's gorgeous. It's pretty. It's 20. No shit. Next. Petal pink. Aw, you didn't like it? It was a gorgeous pick, but I'm gonna stick with what I'm wearing. Well, you're the New York fashion expert. Besides, you always make a good impression. Alright, I'm dressed. Mission accomplished. Now that that's taken care of, I have some other business to attend to. He salutes you before running out the door. What do you suppose he does all day when he's not advising you? Probably jets around in sports cars and hang out with models or something? What? I just think he's cool, okay? Right. Well, we should probably get over to the venue. Let's go! Hmm, New York. A short car ride later, you arrive at the United Nations celebration. You search for a familiar face in the crowd and find Liam speaking to some delegates. When he sees you, he excuses himself. I am thrilled to see you made it safely over the Pacific. Safely, though not entirely comfortably. Oh, if there is something I can do to improve the comfort of the jet, please don't hesitate to mention it. Can you make Maxwell complain less? Well, sadly, that is beyond my control. But perhaps I can make up for the discomfort by taking you out in the city tonight. Hmm. Wouldn't it be more appropriate for me to take you out? This is my city, after all. You make an excellent point. What would we do? Well, we can get lost in the crowd at Times Square. Stroll through the Central Park. It will be hard back to the night we met. Which is, if I recall correctly, was a pretty good night. You recall incorrectly. It was a spectacular night. Aren't you a charmer? I try. A man with an air of importance and several medals on his chest approaches, eyes intent on Liam. It seems my courtly duties call. If you would like to join me tonight, I will wait for you after the party. I'm sure that'll cost 30 diamonds as well. <laughs> if you want last longing glance before turning towards the approaching dignitary, you spot Drake and Maxwell by a large stained glass window and head towards them. Riley, thank goodness you're here! That's, uh, suspicious. What did you do down? I got my flags mixed up. I thought Finland was Sweden, Sweden was Norway, Norway was Iceland, Iceland was Denmark, and Denmark was Sweden. He addressed all the delegations incorrectly, including Sweden. Twice. I was guessing by that point? Now, now that we're arguing for the past hour over disputes going back on to something called uh, the Kalmar Union, I, I just wanted to say hi. Oh, Maxwell. How about uh, you, Drake? Enjoying the party? It's actually not so bad. At least I get a decent ribeye around here. I should have guessed. You know me oh so well, but what are you doing with us? Aren't you supposed to be doing courtly stuff like winning friends and influencing people? 
Actually, I'm supposed to impress Adelaide tonight. Got any hot tips? If I know anything about Adelaide, it's she likes a stiff drink in Maxwell. She's always dancing, making me dance with her. Uh, maybe I could get a break this time? <laughs> then I say focus on her other vices. She'll certainly respect you if you go... If you can go drink for drink with her. Sure you know how to have a good time. Yeah, and everyone knows she's the biggest gossip at the court. So... Alcohol and gossip. That's refreshingly simple, actually. That's the spirit! You got this all by yourself! Without my help at all! Don't worry, Maxwell. I won't tell her where you are. Speaking of, I see her. She's over by the bar alone. Now's your chance. Go get him, Tiger Grr! You walk over. Duchess Adelaide, it's lovely to see you. It is? Please dispense with the Duchess nonsense. It makes me feel like I'm becoming my mother. She grimaces. What are you waiting for? An invitation? What? Don't just stand there, sit! Alright. As you take the chair next to her, she flags down the server and takes a fresh glass of champagne. Champagne? I would love some. She plucks another glass from the serving tray and offers it to you. You watch her drink her entire glass in one sip. Down the whole glass. Remember, we're supposed to drink as much as she. Mm. You toss back the entire glass, setting it down on the table. Adelaide smiles. I am pleased to see someone at the so-called party knows how to have a good time. So am I. Oh, here, let me get you another. She sighs. You know, I find the United Nations itself far too seriously. Don't you think this event could use a little extra excitement? Mm, more alcohol? It certainly couldn't hurt. Though, more of the same can hardly be considered extra excitement. How about this instead? I bet you can't tell me a piece of gossip that I don't already know. I wouldn't be so sure. Hmm. Vastine thinks Queen Mother is unfit for her position. Madeline pretended she was chocolate Audrey to Hayes. Ooh, let's go with this one. I did, in fact, know that particular tidbit. She is my daughter, after all. But I am impressed with your backbone. Not everyone would gossip about a woman to her mother. Thanks, I think. Hmm, to be quite honest, Riley, Regina and Madeline had given me a rather negative impression of you. I should have known better than to trust those two boars. Neither knows how to have any fun at all. But it seems that you do. I may be less careful to avoid your company in the future. Wow. I'm a party animal because I downed a whole drink and started gossip. Allow me to answer with... I look forward to it. I wish Madeline and your sense of levity. It would do her some world of good. What do you mean? The girl had has ambitions higher than the sky since she was old enough to sit at a state function. I know beyond a doubt that she will be an excellent queen, but I do worry about what being a queen will mean for her. She puts immense pressure on herself as it is, but I can't see herself doing her any good. Perhaps if she just let loose every once in a while, like you, I wouldn't worry so much. It would probably be better for everyone if she could do that. You know, I think you could have gone far in this court if you hadn't got caught up in that Tarek fellow. Such a sad sap, that one. And boring. Only gossip I ever heard of was... Oh my god, tongue time. Every gossip I ever heard about him was that he wore exclusively Italian leather shoes. Uh, at least those were Santorini's, but that man has taste. Wait, what? Oh, now that I've told the... I'm told this place carries an extremely rare and delicious scotch, I bet I can charm some other waiter. She waves as she walks off towards a man in a black 
carrying a serving tray. You walk away from Adeline and spot Maxwell, mostly hidden in an alcove in a far corner of the room. Hey, Maxwell, everything over okay over here? I was trying to perform this cool trick I once saw where you can toss a, a piece of bruschetta in the air without losing the toppings and then catch it in your mouth. But I hit the Turkish ambassador in the face, so I sought asylum in this alcove. I hope you're having a better night. How'd it go with Adelaide? I think I managed to impress her. Woo! Go Riley! Now, all we have to do is find Tara, clear your name, and stop Madeline and Liam's wedding. You take a seat next to him. Well, Maxwell, there's something that's on my mind. Shoot. What if we don't find Tara? No, Riley. Uh, d don't think like that. We're so close. You, you can't give up. That's not... Uh, even if we find Eric, you never know what'll happen. So what happens if I don't become queen? I just want to know that you and Bertrand and Savannah and Little Birdie will be okay. You know me. I'll, I'll break dance my way to success. Or, or maybe become a magician. Or I, I, I could become a best-selling author. Maxwell... Right, uh, as for Bertrand, he's kind of figuring things out right now, I think. But Riley? When I invited you to Cordonia, I liked you, but I didn't know you. I saw how Liam looked at you, and I thought maybe I could help him and set things right for House Balmont. I didn't think things would be this hard. Maxwell, you couldn't have. I know, I just... <sighs> what I'm trying to say is that the way things are with House Balmont... That's for me and Bertrand to fix, not you. I don't want you to be unhappy because of us. Oh, Maxwell. <sighs> I want to help House Balmont. We'll definitely take it. But please don't worry about us too much. House Balmont has survived the Great Apple Famine, the Purge of Light Ghosts, the, and, and so far me. So we're persistent. Thank you, Maxwell. Come on, let's head back to the party. You forgot to mention the shoes. You literally got a tip about shoes. Oh. oh what if we... Or what, what if I mess up again? I, I, I might already be an internationally wanted man. How about this? I'll keep an eye on you. How do I... No, you can be trusted. Well, we could find somewhere else to go. Somewhere away from all the diplomats. Ooh! Kara told me that the building has a cool rooftop lounge. I bet it has an amazing view of the city. Do you want to go? Uh, 16 to go to the roof with Maxwell because he shouldn't have caused any international problems, or stay at the party. We should probably stay here so we're not missed. Yeah, besides, uh, with my luck tonight, I'd probably fall off the roof and insult Spain on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> Is that even possible? What? What would you do? Like, what? <laughs> oh my god, I'm done. This guy. <clears throat> hey, don't say that. Sure, you might have caused an international incident. Or two. But you're Maxwell Balmont, the happy-go-lucky, impulsive guy who walked into my bar what feels like a lifetime ago. That sounds like a bad thing. No, it's not. You know, I'm not sure I've properly thanked you for what you did that night. What do you mean? I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. You don't think that it would have been best if I just left you well enough alone? I, if I brought you here, and then also responsible for your name being dragged through the mud for all the problems that have come on, I should have at least been able to fix them for you. You've been fixing them. Weren't you the one who spent all day on the phone trying to track down Tarek? I guess. And who helped me chase down a reporter on the streets of Italy? Ooh, I like this one. Me? Exactly, and when I was sitting at the airport after coronation, waiting for my flight, who came to bring me back to court? Well, Bertrand was there too. 
It was you, Maxwell. I can always count on you. Maxwell, you're like, uh... uh in this playthrough, we will stick with friend. Or brother. Aw, oh, Riley! But, like, a cool fun brother, right? Not a mean, overbearing one? Definitely. Bertrand's got the overbearing part covered. Boy, does he! Okay, now, we should really get back to the party instead of hiding back here. You ready? Maxwell stands up and stretches, flexing his wrists. Feels good to use my hands to their full potential! Come on, you dork. You're about to leave for the evening, and when you remember... Oh, right! Liam wanted me to show him the city. You search the crowds of, as people file out, and you spot Liam at the perimeter of the room. He winks before heading out of one of the doors. Going out with Liam will unlock an exclusive casual outfit for him. <laughs> Drake and Maxwell and Hannah and Bertrand. Um, one, what a shirt. Two, there are too, too many ands. Um, God, this sucks. I can't wait to do a diamond edition on this. Like, every time we have stood this guy up, every time. I do like the graffiti under the bridge, though, so at least we get to see this cool park. But call it a night. I'll see Liam tomorrow. Later that night, you're back in your hotel room alone when you hear a knock on your door. You get up to answer, and it's none other than Maxwell and Bertrand. Boy, am I shocked to see you, Maxwell. Really? Not even a little. Bertrand, on the other hand. Yes, yes, I have returned, but that's not the big news. What is it? Maxwell? I spoke to a few more shops, and based on the customer descriptions matching Terry, narrowing down to a list of addresses where he could be holed up. That's great. We should... Don't let your enthusiasm get the better of you just yet. Why? What's the catch? Maxwell was only able to narrow it down to ten locations. Which means a lot of searching when we get to LA. Ten locations? That's gonna take a while. Sorry! Wait, at the party tonight, Adelaide mentioned that Tarek only wears Sartorini shoes. Is that helpful? Actually, yes! Only a few of those shops carry that brand, so you can focus your efforts on the addresses from those that do. Wait, did you just say when we get to LA? That he did. Is the engagement tour making a surprise detour? Nope. It'll just be us. The Royal Jet will be waiting for us as soon as we're ready to leave. King Liam is regretfully unable to accompany, as it wouldn't be do the King good to be away from the court for so long with no reason given. However, he did volunteer use of the jet, as there's no time to lose. I guess that means... We're off to LA! Yeah! Will you be able to track down Tyrk at long last? Find out in the next chapter. Well, hopefully we do. Otherwise, I'm going to flip something. <laughs> well, that being said, I hope you all did enjoy the video. Uh, please feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Head down in the description below. We do have a Discord server where you and other members of the community can hang out, chat, talk, and whatnot. And I'm there as well. And there's also some links to social media as well as some links to support me and my content. It's always greatly appreciated. Otherwise, hit that like and share button. And until next time, thank you for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.